Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Thursday, December 1st. Tesla held its Tesla Semi delivery event tonight. And on stage, Elon Musk confirmed that the charging system for the semi truck, called the 1 megawatt ultra fast charger, will also be available on the Cybertruck. The event was covered live on Tesla's YouTube channel, and it was actually fairly short. Musk and Dan Priestley, who is Tesla's senior manager over semi truck engineering, spoke on the capabilities and technology of the Semi and its charging system. The Semi is using Tesla's new 1,000-volt battery architecture, which Dan noted would be on other future Tesla vehicles. The next generation of charger port will be the 1,000-volt Semi, and it will include three times the current density and immersive cooling. Tesla showed a cutaway view of the charger, and it shows the coolant sheath surrounding the inner cable instead of only a separate cooling terminal. While speaking on the subject, Dan asked Elon Musk who should announce the news, and Musk said, quote, It's going to be used for Cybertruck 2. Dan chimed in, saying the technology will be coming to Tesla's supercharger stations in the next year. With this information, it's reasonable to assume that at least some version of the Cybertruck will run on the same 1,000-volt architecture that the Semi does. In order for the two vehicles to charge, they would need to operate at the same voltage. This high-voltage structure is actually not entirely rare right now. Both the Porsche Taycan and the Hyundai Ioniq 5 run at 800 volts, enabling faster charging where it is available. The big difference is going to be charger availability, since I've actually found it difficult to get the advertised charging speed with my Hyundai. Tesla has a much better track record when it comes to charging, and with the new Semi and Cybertruck, I expect that that high reputation will be maintained. Tesla is giving a $3,750 discount, which it is calling a price adjustment, for every single Model 3 and Model Y vehicle delivered in the U.S. in December. The move appears to be encouraging people to take delivery right now rather than waiting for the tax credit, which will take effect in 2023. Yesterday, we reported that Tesla is seeing some level of cancellations in the U.S., likely due to the long wait times that have also led customers to changing financial situations. But today, Electrek learned from sources familiar with the matter that it is offering a $3,750 credit for the last month of 22. This amount happens to be half the $7,500 tax credit that's going to take effect. Some automakers anticipate that their electric vehicles will only be eligible for about half the credit due to battery materials and assembly origin requirements. This is an unusual move for Tesla. CEO Elon Musk often stated that Tesla doesn't offer discounts and that its policy is to have consistent and transparent pricing across all markets. These special circumstances have led to some stress on Tesla's anticipated numbers for the season. Tesla's chief designer, Franz van Holzhausen, gave a rare interview where he discussed the Cybertruck design and teased an upcoming new Tesla model. The designer confirmed that the truck's radical design is the result of the manufacturing process that Tesla had to adopt to build a truck with a stainless steel exoskeleton. He said that the aim was to overcome the practical challenges of the structural design, saying that the Cybertruck's ultimate aim was to be used in a variety of cases, like a Swiss army knife. He said that the Cybertruck is surprisingly aerodynamic. Of course, I'm sure that he means in terms of a pickup truck. Von Holzhausen was asked about his favorite design at Tesla so far, and he said that it's the one that's coming, but that he can't talk about it. To put on a speculative hat, the next vehicle that Tesla is expected to unveil is the RoboTaxi, something that was actually corroborated by a slide at the recent Tesla Semi unveiling. This new EV is going to be dedicated for full self-driving and be used primarily as a driverless vehicle. Not much else is known about it, but Elon Musk said that it will be futuristic looking. The association leading the CCS standard, which is called Char-In, has responded to Tesla's move to make the Tesla connector the North American standard. If you're not familiar, Tesla has renamed their connector the North American Charging Standard, or NACS. So, the CCS promoting group, called Char-In, replied by puffing their chest, saying, quote, Char-In is the largest global association focused on the electrification of all forms of transportation based on the seamless and interoperable charging experience enabled by the Combined Charging System, or CCS, and the Megawatt Charging System, MCS. CCS and MCS are the global standard for charging vehicles of all kinds. They get to the point by saying, quote, 
we encourage stakeholders to investigate ways to focus on market acceleration rather than the creation of yet another form factor alternative which will lead to further consumer confusion and delay EV adoption. CCS has gone through many years of rigorous standardization processes, which is a required activity for any new standard proposal. After a decade of collaborative work, the domestic and international EV industry has aligned around CCS. After boasting a little bit more of the industry reach and their connections, Charin also suggests, quote, At a minimum, the Tesla proposal will have the hurdle of passing through the established standardization process via standards bodies such as the ISO, IEC, and or the SAE. Be sure to stay tuned for my opinion on Charin's response to Tesla's charger. According to CarBuzz, a new patent filed with the German Patent Office shows that BMW is designing a new suspension system capable of harvesting energy from an electric vehicle's wheel movement as it absorbs shocks from a bump. The pent-up energy that is absorbed is then sent to a generator unit that converts it to usable electricity to charge the EV battery. It's not unlike regenerative braking in concept, which has been in electric and hybrid cars for quite a long time, but this one's rather interesting. I'd be curious to see how much energy can be captured from imperfections in the road. I'm not all that versed in kinetic electric recapture efforts, but I worry that the practicality of this technology will be limited. Hopefully, I am proved wrong by actual engineers with a lot more capability than I have. Hyundai Motor Group, including Kia and Genesis, are having their best year in the U.S. as demand for their new electric vehicles is driving record sales. Hyundai and Kia have both achieved records in November as demand for the EVs heats up. Kia's electrified model sales increased 133% in November from last year, driving the total U.S. sales 8% higher than the previous record, which was set in 2016. Hyundai saw demand for its electric vehicles climb as the Kona EV sales grew 113% year-over-year, with the Ioniq 5 hitting sales of 1,191 for November, getting a total in the year to 21,262. As Hyundai and Kia ramp up EV production in the U.S., we may see a new trend coming. Ford Motor Company announced plans to invest an additional $180 million in its Halewood EV powertrain facility in northern England. In October, Ford announced $280 million investing to transform the facility to switch from making transmission into electric power units. And now the announced total of the facility is closer to $500 million. As the electric automaker looks to go all-electric overseas by 2030, the fresh funding will help bolster the plant's output by 70%, which should in turn supply powertrains to a large majority of European Ford electric fleets. Okay, it is opinion time. I find it rather amusing that the CCS promoting organization sent out a response to Tesla that tells them effectively to butt out. I honestly think they should have just stayed quiet, and I think it would have been fine for them. The CCS organization was boasting of their accomplishments in getting manufacturers around the globe to move to that plug, but we can't forget that CCS was not always in a position of dominance. The Chademo port also had some lumber to swing not long ago. As a matter of fact, it's still being put on the Nissan LEAF vehicles right now, and the plug is very much at many charging stations, both large and small. Although more than 50 EVs use that CCS plug, we can't ignore the context that Tesla outsells all of those cars combined with just four different models. If we want to cover the most EVs possible with one single plug, it would be the Tesla plug right now. Is it too late for the North American charging standard that Tesla has made to live up to its name? Personally, I think it's not too late, but I have been called a dreamer before. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Joe Blow shouts, Volvo is a mutant Chinese automaker. Well, Joe Blow, there is some truth to the exclamation, although I wouldn't go far as to say that they are mutants or a mutant company. Volvo is owned by the Chinese automotive group Geely, and to which extent they have their hands in development is really up for debate. It's very normal for car brands to be bought up and used by a conglomerate in various forms of autonomy. I have been told that Lotus, who is majority owned by Geely, has an immense amount of autonomy within the broad organization. They have used this to develop an electric car that is 
strikingly different from the Volvo or even Polestar vehicles that we see today. So will Volvo just pump out Western copies of Chinese electric cars? I don't know, I kind of doubt it. I think that Volvo has had a pretty good run as far as making a brand and they're probably gonna stick to that, attracting a lot of new customers into the brand who are ready to buy electric sustainable vehicles. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electric. I'm Mikey G and I hope you have a great day.